legal marijuana contains dangerous mold, you guys. And states approve it anyway. That's right. Marijuana's humid growing conditions are a paradise for dangerous mold. And states where marijuana is legal make growers hire labor lab laboratories to check for concentrations of mold and other contaminants that can sicken or kill. But laboratories in many states appear to underreport contaminations of contaminants. A Wall Street Journal analysis found you guys. That's right. A disproportionate uh, share of the samples were reported to contain levels of mold just under the legal limits compared with the share of samples containing levels of mold just over the legal limits. The analysis of over 2 million mold testing results from nine states found you guys. Wow. The implorable pattern suggests tainted samples are being cleared for sale and statistical experts said the findings reveal a system that isn't reliably monitored for dangerous substances in, in legal marijuana, not illegal, legal marijuana. In a quote, they say, this is something that would not be expected if you took measurements of mold and reported them out in a way that was done without knowledge of the legal threshold, said Joseph uh, Hogan, a bio biostatistician at Brown University. Says growers, labs, and regulators appear to be exposing people who use legal marijuana to dangerous contaminants, said uh, Tess Eldum, a senior research association uh, associate at the Environmental Engineering Program at the University of Colorado Boulder. And in a quote says, there's no way to know what's going on when you get a system that doesn't play by the rules, she said. The journal requested mold testing data from the 37 states with medical and adult use marijuana programs, and the journal received data from 18 states ranging from 2014 to 2024, but didn't include data from nine that wasn't comprehensive. Molds including Aspergillus uh, farusium, as well as the toxins they produce, can cause infections, dangerous immune responses, and even death. And marijuana users uh, are nearly four times as likely as non-users to be infected with fungi, including Aspergillus, a 2020 review of insurance claims showed. In a quote, the spores are so small that when you take a deep breath, you can pick them up into the lungs, said Zamir Punja, a professor of plant bi biotechnology at uh, Simon Fraser University in British Columbia. In the test results, the journal analyzed labs in Colorado, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island were four times more likely to report results just under the legal limits than just over. Colorado's Revenue Department said it monitors and audits labs closely, and the Cannabis Control Commission in Massachusetts said environmental factors and different testing methods can produce eight atypical results. Rhode Island's Cannabis Control Commission said it would welcome a nationwide standard for testing marijuana. And Maryland in 2021 raised its legal limit by a factor of 10. Average mold concentrations reported by labs in the state increased in kind. And Maryland's Cannabis Administration said its testing standards are evolving, you guys. Most states set the limit on yeast and mold content in cannabis at 10,000. And in a quote, Colony forming units, they're saying, of yeast and mold per gram, a measure of cells that could form harmful growths. Labs use one or two tests, a lab culture or PCR testing, and lab cultures document live microorganisms that proliferate on, on a plate. PCR tests search for their DNA fingerprints, and only a few states review the methods that labs use, you guys. The regulations were uh, molded on those for other crops because there is little research on the cultivation of marijuana. It remains illegal federally, even as states have allowed it for its use and sale. And the long-term health effects of marijuana use are only beginning to get a closer look from researchers. In a quote, we're conducting a big ex experiment without enough knowledge, said Dr. David Miller, a professor who studies fungi toxins at Claritin University in Canada. Discrepancies between what companies report on marijuana packaging and the content of those products are an example of inaccuracies and fraud 
in the cannabis testing market, the National Academies of Sciences, uh, Engineering and Medicine said in a September report. And labs that passed a larger share of samples received more business over time. Well, of course they did. Uh, the journal's analysis showed labs that detected less mold year over year tested 28% more samples the next year. The data from 2014 to 2024 showed. And competitors that reported more contamination year over year tested 50% fewer samples over the same period. Period. From April 2021 through 2023, labs in Massachusetts that failed fewer tests than in previous years uh, tested a median of 84% more samples during the next 12 months. And a processing plant in Holyoke, Massachusetts, owned by Florida based TrueLeave, tested 80% of its samples at the lab Steep Hill, Massachusetts between May 2021 and January 2022. And TrueLeave's, TrueLeave's failure rate for mold concentration at Steep Hill during that time was one-sixth the failure rate at labs that processed the rest of its samples. TrueLeave said it selected uh, state-licensed labs based on factors including capacity, turnaround time, and pricing, and Steep Hill's methods were approved by the state's Cannabis Control Commission, said Shannon Hoffman, uh, regional director of operations at, at Green Analyt Analytics, the lab's uh, current, uh, current name. She wouldn't comment on specific customers, and Lorna McMurray worked at TrueLeave uh, True plant. The Steep Hill was testing most of its samples, and she died at the age of 27 after suffering an asthma attack there on January 4th, 2024. Her family filed a wrongful death suit against TrueLeave, claiming moldy cannabis dust contributed to her respiratory attack, and the lawsuit alleges that a leaky HVAC system caused mold to grow on the marijuana in the processing plant, and a machine workers uh, and a machine that workers used to grind cannabis spewed dust that contained visible mold, the suit says. In a quote, they say, they did not protect my daughter, said Laura uh, Bruno um, uh, McMurney's mother. And this article goes on and on and on and really kind of touches on that. And I, I just can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. You know, all these states say, oh, there's our, our cannabis is safe and this and this and that. But yet this report is saying that it may be just a situation of buyer beware. And I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. You're on mute, Dr. T. It's bad. Mm -hmm. The cannabis users have been using, you know, have been buying cannabis for for years um, without testing. Uh, and testing, we're, we're a maturing industry. We're developing the testing. It's not 100%. Um, we need more work on better sampling um, as well as uh, the protocols. Uh, mold is everywhere. It's on us right now. Mm -hmm. It's really about the overgrowth of mold that uh, that we're looking, and it's also about does that overgrowth cause harm? Um, and you know, it's unfortunate that that worker um, had a reaction in in the plant. Um, but those are the things we're trying to prevent. Um, so I'd say it's not time for alarm. It's just time to do the work and improve our methods. And if I'm correct, Dr. T, there are some molds that are good, like penicillin is a mold, right? Well, it's the, the product of the mold that's good, yeah. Okay. Penicillin, it's a product of the mold, yeah. Okay. Mushroom. What's that, Rico? Fungus, mushroom, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fun guys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Those are all. J Jason, I was a little surprised you picked up this story, uh, being that it was by the Wall Street Journal. Your guy said that the Wall Street Journal is always wrong. Well, you know, you know what, yeah. Rico, I'm not I'm not an absolutist in, 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 in that space, and I'm here to report on trending stories, and we had these doctors on today, so I don't understand why you, you would uh, even think that. You're not an absolutist. No. Nope. Just 90%. <laughs> you sir are fake news <laughs> uh, dr dr oswald dr mark do you guys have any any thoughts on on this on this mold contamination and like sh should buyers really beware i'll try so we live in a microbial world like dr t said so it's difficult to basically in fact almost next to impossible to grow cannabis without microbes because 
the plant itself does not fix nitrogen from the air, but the microbes mm -hmm. in the soil and your growth and does. Um, but that said, you know, there's an issue with throughput of testing that makes the PCR, uh, which stands for polymerase chain reaction, which basically counts up DNA. Um, the issue with that is that um, you could harvest cannabis that might get infected with, say, aspergillus or one of these other molds. And if the cannabis is dried out to below a certain moisture content, there's no way that mold can live on that cannabis. Now, did mold once live on that cannabis? If you do a PCR test, you're going to find the DNA for, you know, the mold carcasses that are still, I guess, on the cannabis itself. But in no way does that present a danger to the user because... The flower itself is dried below the content at which mold growth would happen. And if any cannabis gets wet, like if you accidentally, I don't know, you got a bunch of cannabis in your canoe and your canoe turns over and all your cannabis mm -hmm. is wet, yeah, you can make existing dry cannabis go moldy because, as Dr. T said, spores are everywhere. We can't. We live in a microbial world, like it or not. So even just like the use of broad spectrum antimicrobials, it's like throwing sand down at the beach. You know, it just it doesn't really. You could certainly grow cannabis in an aseptic environment, but there is a relationship between microbes and the plant that absolutely is needed for the plant to live. I feel like we need to do a remake of uh, Material Girl and turn it into a microbial world. <laughs> That's what I heard, too. That's immediately what I heard as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a difference in something that is going to inherently happen and people who just truly aren't managing a proper environment to grow their cannabis. And then, you know, we looked at Colorado when these regulations first started coming out. People were doing things like hydrogen peroxide washes or putting it in the microwave before sending the sample in. So they passed for molds because they were covered in PM. At a certain point, there is a rule that should exist in the world that you fucked up, you take a loss, right? Mm -hmm. If you did such a bad job of growing your product that you produce such something covered in PM, something disgusting looking, like throw it in the trash, run it to distillate, remediate it, whatever you gotta do, but don't sell it to consumers to then combust and inhale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do, Dr. Ian Oswald, do you have anything to, to, to state on this? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Mark wrapped it up pretty well there. Um, I saw a really good talk at the American Chemical Society by Kyle Boyar, who brought up the point that are we even testing for the right microbes? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, potential pathogens or whatnot that we might not even be testing for that you know, just like this whole pet society issue that happened, you know, in the LA Times news article, where if you're not testing for it, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means that you're not going to see it on a COA. And it could be a similar sort of situation here where, um, you know, other sort of things might be uh, on the plan. So, I mean, to Mark's point and um, everybody else's, I'd say, you know, yeah, we're, we're still a young industry and learning. Uh, but, you know, cannabis is also unique in the sense that, you know, some of the things that might uh, you know, in fact, it, it it might be different from, you know, if it's a tomato or other plants, mm -hmm. uh, A, because you're typically going to be inhaling it or at least extracting it and then inhaling it, um, but also because it's just, you know, it, it's unique in, in itself kind of, uh, you know, in the bud structure and whatnot. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity here, to be honest, like as far as kind of new technologies for catching it earlier than what, uh, you know, kind of seeing the effects downstream. And, uh, you know, some of that might be related to some of these fungi produce specific VOCs, which is what we'll be talking about later on, right? Um, and I know that there's technologies out there that hospitals use for detecting VOCs of bacteria to rapidly be able to know uh, if somebody has a certain sort of bacterial infection based on what that sort of smell is on the breath or whatnot. Uh, and so I think actually, you know, there's, there's, there's opportunity here as far as making better and more effective and more rapid sort of detection of these sort of things so people can catch it earlier and then you know maybe you know they don't have to throw out the whole batch if they can uh, minimize kind of what's going on there but yeah i mean it, it's definitely an issue i think um and you know we're just kind of scratching the surface i'd say